Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. It's Sunday, bright and early, daily discipline, mind, body, and soul. This is how we get through. Let's do our Sunday study group for warriors, for my hardcore heads. Basically on Sundays, I just go through my notes. I study every day. It's part of the mind, body, and soul program. Before we get into it, I want to show you guys a cologne that I got in the mail. This is good stuff. You know I like cologne. This is Camaro Home Intense. It's a clone, an impression of Christian Dior Home Intense. It's almost dead on. This is close. It's not like that Tom Ford. <laughs> this is actually really close. Now, it smells a little synthetic when you first spray it on you. That dies down rather quickly and then you just get the Dior Home Intense uh, scent. I think this is a little stronger. I think this lasts a little longer. This cost me like 20 bucks or something. Camaro Home Intense. I don't think it has anything to do with Chevrolet. I had a Camaro. Piece of shit. So let's just get into it. Here's a large question, generic question, philosophize on this. What's life for? What do you want to do with your life? Do you have any goals? I ask this when I do coaching with people. If anybody out there wants coaching or mentoring, go to my website, skyazrael.com. I always put the link below. And we'll talk about it in our first call. The first call is always free, just to get to know you. And I ask you what your goals are. A lot of people don't really have goals, particularly young guys. I didn't really have goals until I got older. And I had the same answer everybody has at that age, where you just kind of want to be happy. Your goal is to be happy. That's not a goal. You will never be happy if that's your goal. You can't make goal a ha a happiness your goal. Because happiness isn't a thing. It's not tangible. How do you know when you're going to get there? How do you know what happiness even is? No, you have to have purpose and meaning. Some sort of meaning and purpose in your life. Make that your goal. And your happiness is squeezed out of your purpose and meaning. It's a byproduct of it. That's where you find your happiness is in the pursuit of meaning. So find a goal, pick a point on the horizon, go towards it. You'll be happier. Here's more generic advice. Sometimes you gotta go back to the most basic generic lessons in life. You do that with anything. You, you could learn how to weld. I could teach you metal fabrication, some good skills. And I'll teach you the most basic, basic stuff. And you gotta remember that even when you're an expert. The advice is do what works. There's nothing wrong with forging a new path and creating new ways of doing things, but I've learned, at least for myself, a good recipe for success, to be successful in life, business, love, you can pick different areas. Doing what works, works. <laughs> and you can always put your little twist on it. They taught me this in business school many years ago, that pioneers get killed by savages. So for you trendsetters out there, you're great, we need you. But what you're doing is you're really paving the way for the next man to come behind you and to be successful off of what you created. <laughs> it's often the way it is. You, you go off the path into the, the bushes with your machete, hacking a new direction, a new path. There is no path there. You created that path. You're the first one down it. There's a good chance you're just going to get killed by some savage with a blowgun. <laughs> Blowguns are really cool. I should get a blowgun. Add it to my arsenal. 
So do what works. Go find some old guy, ask him what he did, and go do that. You ever heard of the Red Queen problem? I was studying this earlier in the week. I thought it was interesting. The Red Queen is a character from a book that I never read. Through the Looking Glass, I think it's what it was. Who is it? Lewis Carroll? I don't know. You Google it. It doesn't matter. The Red Queen problem is everything is after me all the time and I'm not smart enough to deal with it or to solve it. That's the realization. That's the problem. And you realize that. And that's interesting to think about that. Because you can take it in two ways. And on the very basic level, on the kind of a shallow level, when I first hear it, everything is after me all the time and I'm not smart enough to deal with it or to solve it. I think, well, then find help. And successful people find help. Look at Donald Trump. One of the reasons why he is going to be successful in this next term, I think, I predict, is because of the people that he's surrounded himself with. He's got an amazing team, like a dream team. A successful person, go look at Elon Musk. Elon Musk is on Donald Trump's team, but Elon Musk, I'm, I'm in Central Florida, we're not far from SpaceX, and someone was telling me this the other day, Elon Musk isn't a physicist. Sure, he's smart, maybe he has a high IQ, and he does a lot of things, but he's not the one building the rockets. He's not a physicist. He's smart enough to hire some of the best minds. The people that work at SpaceX are some of the smartest people in the world. And he's smart enough to assemble that type of crew. You can't just be an island under yourself and do everything under yourself. So I take that on the first level, and everything is after me all the time, and I'm not smart enough to deal with it or to solve it. That's the Red Queen problem. But if I think about it, I think it's deeper than that. Because it's a self-realization where you realize that I, I'm navigating through this life and I don't really know what to do. I'm basically an idiot. And everybody, every man is having that same realization. So when you look to the next person that you may perceive as authority or as smarter, as somebody that can be your guide, maybe it's your father, maybe it's your teacher, maybe it's your boss, maybe it's your brother, who knows, and you ask that person, what should I do, what should I do, and you think they're going to know. You have to realize, they're also sitting there thinking, looking in the mirror, sitting there thinking, everything is after me all the time and I'm not smart enough to deal with it or solve it. The guy that you're asking advice for is also confused as fuck, just like the rest of us. And I think that's an important realization. Because it helps you to own your journey a little bit. You have to take risks and chances. And that's a positive affirmation that I tell myself because I can get awfully comfortable in my comfort zone and that is, there's no growth in that. And I tell myself, I allow myself to take risks and chances. Move on to the next one. Here's a question that someone else asked that I thought was interesting that I've been kind of pondering. Why are all the male role models being viciously attacked by the left? And are there any positive male role models left? And if so, who are they? Why are all masculine men looked at as racist and misogynist and negative and bad? Why is there a concerted agenda to make men more feminine? And why are other men involved in this? It makes no sense to me. No, oh, wrong direction, let's go this way. Oh, let's skip over this page. I got a lot of politics. It's been a political week. Let's go over some of the politics. Talk a little bit about faith. Just to understand it more. What is faith? As you develop a relationship with the universe, with your higher power, with God, whatever you want to call it, You kind of learn to ride the wave, like a surfer. And the surfer doesn't control the ocean. It goes with the flow. A good surfer knows the ocean is, is more powerful than him. He's not dominating the wave. 
no matter how big the wave gets, he just rides it as best he can. And there gets to be a relationship between the surfer and the wave. I've lived by the beach for a long time. And when the surfer knows how the board works, knows how to keep his balance, knows how to move it, it's really just about trusting the wave. Because you can't control the wave. The wave's more powerful than you, stronger than you, does whatever it wants to do. But when you're just sitting on the shore, like I've been, walking my dog on the beach, it looks like these guys are mastering the wave. They're not. They're just riding it. So faith is like that. It's just like riding a wave, no matter how big it becomes. Ask yourself, you know, what gets you through? Do you have any time? We'll do another one, or another couple. Here's some financial advice that you get from the Bible. You know, the Bible gives you financial advice. God says, Oh, no man. Oh, no man. Word of God. Oh, no man. Don't owe any man. Don't owe him nothing. Now, you may have to go into debt. We live in that kind of society. I'm still in debt because of this house. I've paid off my vehicles. I'm almost completely paid off with my credit card. I will be soon. That'd be a good feeling. That's been looming over my head for years. And within the next five years, I'll be paid off on this house. No problem. And at that point, I'll be debt free, 100% debt free. That's freedom. Oh, no man. Do we have time to do any more? Let's end it off with some positive affirmation talk. We have a lot of neg negative self-talk in our head. I know I do. And it can be self-sabotage. It can really bring me down. It can trigger me. I have PTSD. I can trigger myself through the own thoughts in my head. Through my own thoughts. Sure, I can get triggered by a billboard, by a TV show, by something that someone else does, but I can trigger myself just by thinking. So I have to be able to stay on top of my negative self-talk for my own survival, for my own health. Sometimes the world feels overwhelming. Sometimes two or three or four or five things happen all at once and it's like, oh my God, this is too much. So I look for my weaknesses and say, for example, in that scenario where I completely might be overwhelmed and that does happen, I balance a lot of plates and sometimes one falls and, oh man, then the rest feel like they're all going to fall. I tell myself that I can handle anything that comes my way. Now, when I think of a positive affirmation, I have to think of the negative fear. What's the negative self-talk? What's the, 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 the repetitive negativity that's going on in my head? And I have to be very solid on it. So you may have to explore it a little bit. What's going on with me? What am I feeling? And pinpoint it. Be, be really clear on what emotion you're feeling and why you're feeling it. Are you depressed? Are you anxious? Are you upset? Are you lonely? Are you shameful? Are you guilty? What is it? And then you're gonna tailor, you're gonna use your intelligence, you're gonna step outside of yourself for a second and tailor the perfect sentence. If you can just have it be one sentence, that's great. The shorter the better, short and sweet. And have it be a sentence that directly counteracts the negative self-talk. So if I'm feeling overwhelmed, I tell myself I can handle anything that comes my way. Now that may turn into a fight inside your head. And the way to win that fight, because you may have one side of you saying, I can't handle this, that's overwhelming, I'm fucked. And the other side of you is trying to say, I can handle anything that comes my way and trying to empower yourself. And you can literally get into a battle in your head. The way to win that, to have the positive side win, and to solidify that positive message, to, to chisel it into stone inside your brain so it kicks in automatically, is to engage in physical activity. So for example, you can do push-ups. It's a great thing. You can do anywhere, anytime. Drop and do push-ups. You do them to failure. You don't just do 10, you do them to failure, till you can't do any more. 
on those last few reps, maybe the last five reps, maybe the last 10, but those last few where you're pushing it and you know you're about to drop, that's when you want to kick in this positive affirmation to directly counteract that weakness and it's going to solidify it. It's reprogramming your brain. That moment of weakness, that moment of struggle, the moment of death, because that's what your brain is looking at it when you're going to failure. I can't do it anymore. I can't. I can't. You, you lock in that positive affirmation. I can handle anything that comes my way. You tell yourself that four times in a row as loud as you can as you drop. And even if you drop on the ground on your last rep, you tell yourself that as you're sitting there trying to recuperate, as you're sweaty, as you're out of breath. I can handle anything that comes my way. This, is, this works. This is reprogramming your brain. Food for thought. Have a good day.